When we say a car is fun to drive, what exactly does that mean? Well, there's no better way to demonstrate that than with the ultimate driving machine. Ladies and gentlemen, today I bring to you this gorgeous E36 BMW 323i. Back in the day, we had sports cars and sedans, and it was absurd to think that you could get the best of both worlds. But thanks in part to cars like the 3 Series, we now have sports sedans. Now, BMW may not have invented the sports sedan segment, but they certainly helped define what it is today. The 3 Series first came out in 1975, but was only made available as a sedan with the second generation E30 model. This here is the third generation E36 model. But generally speaking, a lot of people consider the 3 Series as a whole to be the benchmark when it comes to how a sedan should drive. Designs for the E36 started way back in 1981 until it was finally launched in 1990. And compared to the E30, the E36 looks a lot bigger. But it's worth noting that this design was not motivated by aesthetics alone. It was motivated by aerodynamics. And that's made evident by the fact that for the first time, these iconic circular headlights now hide behind a glass cover. The side mirrors were also made smaller to further aid with aerodynamics. And speaking of smaller, check out the kidney grills when they used to still resemble kidneys and not tombstones. Despite being a 30-year-old design, this still has design cues that are evident in BMWs of today. For example, you have this long hood with a short overhang, and the wheel arc up front is significantly bigger than the one at the back. And I must say that this design has aged very well. Now the rear end of the E36 looks pretty straightforward, but you'll be surprised by how many other cars were inspired by this look. And I'm sure you can name a few of them on the comments section. Now when you open this trunk, the first thing you'll notice is this toolkit, which is nicely integrated. You also get a CD changer and get this. Look at this first aid kit, still wrapped in plastic and this came standard with the car. Now the first thing you'll notice about stepping into the E36 is just how driver-centric it is. You'll see that the center stack sticks out and it's slightly angled towards the driver. The instrument cluster is analog, but the trip and mileage meter is digital. This even has a gauge that gives you an instant readout of your fuel mileage, and that can be fun and depressing to look at at times. This particular unit still has its stock radio, and check this out, it even has dual zone climate control. That's automatic climate control. It's really hard to believe that this thing is 30 years old. Now, other variants of the E36 come with an onboard computer, and that paved the way to a lot of the infotainment systems we see today. But this has an analog clock, which I actually prefer. This interior has Euro feels all the way, from the headlight switches to the power window buttons, and the glove box, which is dampened and felted. And even the dimmer for the rear view mirror is distinctly German. But what really set the E36 apart during its era was its door cards. You'll see that it's all one piece and that the grab handle is built into it. Other cars at the time just had a flat board with the door handles attached to it. This pioneered most of the door cards you see in cars today. But what I really love about this car is the overall ergonomics and how the cockpit just wraps around you. Everything is well within reach, and I say that a lot, but this time, you don't even have to stretch. Everything is at your fingertips. Now let's go see what's under the hood. Now under the hood, you get a 2.5 liter inline six engine, and the E36 came out with various six cylinder engines with displacements ranging from two to 2.8 liters. This particular mid variant, the 323i, gets a 2.5 liter M52 with aluminum block. And compared to its predecessor with the M50 engine with a steel block, this produces less horsepower with 168 horses and 245 newton meters of torque, which is still more than enough for a compact car, especially from this era. 
but there's really no point in staring at this engine. Let's see what this baby can do. I know that cars have come such a long way in the last three decades, but when you get behind the wheel of something like this, you think to yourself, man, what have we been doing these last 30 years? And don't get me wrong, I love new cars, but there's just something to miss about driving cars like this. This comes from an era where the guy behind the wheel was doing most of the driving and not some onboard computer. But it's not just the absence of overpowering driver's aids that really floats my boat with this. It's, it's the culmination of all the sensations you get from man and machine working in unison to do something like this. <laughs> now the steering is hydraulic and it's not as light as what you get in cars nowadays, but that's perfectly fine because it gives a good amount of feedback. You can almost feel the rubber on the tarmac or on the pavement. The steering ratio isn't as quick as what you get in cars nowadays as well, but that's also fine because as long as you know what the wheels are doing, it still makes for a very interactive and fun driving experience. The engine is naturally aspirated, so power delivery is very linear. There's no sudden surge of power that's unexpected. And the good thing is that regardless of what gear you're in, this car can pull. It always feels like you're on first gear. And then there's the five-speed manual transmission. And really, automatics are so convenient to drive, but the joy you get behind something with three pedals is just unparalleled. You feel in absolute control of the car, and the gear shifts are precise. You'd have to be a complete idiot to miss gear in this. And you don't have to deal with any of that auto upshift nonsense that we often get in cars nowadays. The best part is, when you're done being a nut behind the wheel, the car can also be extremely civilized because the suspension is very compliant. The ride is extremely comfortable. Even NVH is great. And you can attribute that to the inline six-cylinder engine. Nothing beats the refinement of an inline six-cylinder engine. And that's why a lot of manufacturers are reverting back to the inline six as opposed to the V6, which has more vibrations. Technology is meant to make a car better, and in many ways it does. But if you're a hardcore driving enthusiast, you will always yearn for that connectedness you feel with cars from this era, especially the 3 Series. And I guess that's what makes this the ultimate driving machine. And it's not just the mechanical aspects of it or the fact that there are hardly any driver's aids, but getting behind the wheel of this really makes you feel one with the car. It almost feels like an extension of your body. And that's what makes a car fun to drive.